Okay, so today we're going to have a look at deferred income. So let's get the trusted T accounts going. So on the left, we're going to put our deferred income, which is on the balance sheet. We're going to have bank, which is on the balance sheet. And then we're going to have revenue, which is in the P&L, otherwise known as turnover. So in this instance, we are working with a charity and they receive a grant every year from 1st of January 2020 to the 30th of the 6th, 2020. Our year end is going to be the 31st of March 2020 and the grant is for £100,000. So this was received on the 1st of March 2020. So our first entry is that we've received money in the bank for 100k. So we're going to debit the bank because this is an asset and we're going to credit revenue by 100k because turnover and revenue is a credit. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is we need to understand that we can't account for the full 100k because some of it does not relate to our year end. So if we count, we've got January, February, March, April, May and June. But the amounts that don't relate to us are April, May and June. So what we need to do is take this 100k divided by the six months that it relates to and get rid of three months of it that we cannot account for. So that is going to be 50k. So what we need to do, go to the balance sheet over here. So we're going to put 50k as a credit here in deferred income because deferred income is a liability and we're going to debit revenue over here by 50k. So overall we end up with just 50k of revenue at the year end. We've got 50k deferred and 100k in the bank. What you need to understand about deferred income is that this is revenue that we've received that we're not yet owed. So we can't account for it, so we have to defer it, we have to take it out. An easy way to understand the difference between deferred income and accrued income, as I've mentioned on one of my other videos, is that you can't have two ways together. And I'll show you this quickly, what I mean by that. So accrued income, deferred income. So if you were ever unsure if this is a debit or a credit or a liability, the liability. Let's make it right. And what you need to understand, if I put accruals and prepayments over here, is that accruals is obviously a liability. Prepayments is obviously an asset. Now you cannot have two A's together. So you cannot have accruals and accrued income together. And that is because accrued income is an asset because this is money that you are owed or due versus deferred income where we've already received it we've received too much so we need to take it out so what you actually have is accruals and deferred income over here so the a's are kept separate so if you remember it that way it's quite easy to understand and to get your head wrapped around it. So let's do another example of this deferred income. So again, deferred income on the balance sheet is a liability. Bank on the balance sheet. So we've got revenue again over here in the PL. So this time around, we have received an amount of £70,000. And this is for the 1st of May 2020 to the 31st of the 12th, 2020. Our year end is the 31st of the 7th, 2020. So here we have an amount received for May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Eight months. And over here, because we're only reporting to the 31st of July, we're going to have August, September, October, November, December. Five months that do not relate to us. So what we need to do is take this £70,000, 
divide that by eight months and then times by five months and this will give us the deferred income. So 43,750. So our accounting entries are we've received £70,000 in our bank and £70,000 of revenue. So we need to reduce this revenue by 43,750 and create a liability of 43,750. Let's just do one more example. Again, deferred income, which is on the balance sheet, bank, which is on the balance sheet and revenue, which is in the P&L. So this time round, we've received money of £60,000 for the period the 1st of March 2020 to the 27th of June 2020. So our year end is actually the 7th of April 2020. So we're going to make this a little bit harder. So what we need to do is work out the days of this invoice. Now, I did mention this in one of my prior videos, but I shall mention it again. So if you take your knuckles and you count 31 from your first knuckle on your left hand, every single month that lands on a knuckle has got 31 days. So January's got 31, February doesn't, March has 31, April doesn't, May has 31, June doesn't, July is 31. And then if you cross over to your next knuckle, August has got 31 days, September doesn't. October is 31 days, November doesn't, December is 31 days. So that's an easy way to remember how many days there are in a set month. So if we go from here, so March is on a knuckle, and then we've got 28. We're just going to ignore the leap year here. I know there was a leap year. So March, April, May, and then here we haven't gone to the full end of the month, so it's 27. So if we add all that up in a second, let's see what we've got. So 117. So our year end is the 7th of the 4th, 2020. So what we need to do is work out how many days do not relate to us. So in April, there are 30 days. So minus is 7 to get us to the end of the month. And then we have May and then we have June. So let's work that out. So we've got 30 minus 7 plus 31. Nope. 30 minus 7 plus 31 plus 27, so 81. Okay, so step one, put the 60k in the bank and 60k in our revenue. And then we need to do 60,000 divided by 117 times by 81. So let's just put that down here. And that gives us 41,538. So that gives £41,538.46. So if we go to the balance sheet, we put £41,538.46 over here and then reduce this by £41,538.46. And it's as simple as that. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, then please do hit like and consider subscribing and I shall see you on the next video.